Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Politics of Envy. This week I want to talk about how the whole country is run by poshos. Just 7% of the UK population attend private school for their secondary education. Now, I'm not saying that makes you a bad person, but fee-paying schools produce 65% of senior judges. They produce 59% of permanent secretaries in the civil service, 57% of the House of Lords, 54% of top journalists. So guess that doesn't include Navarra Media. And 84% of British prime ministers to date. Only nine of our last 54 Prime Ministers attended non-fee paying schools. Half of them went to Oxford and in our entire parliamentary history we've been governed by an old Etonian for 101 years out of 298 and it's not likely to end anytime soon. Charterhouse, where Jeremy Hunt was head boy, commands over £39,000 a year in fees. Eton, where Boris Johnson first learned to rumple his hair and abandon his real first name, costs over £40,000 a year. For comparison, the median annual income in this country is £28,677. 40 grand. 40 grand. If my mum spent 40 grand on my education and I came out as dumb as Boris Johnson, she would take me back and swap me for a smarter one. I suppose when it comes to elite private schools, you're not paying to understand the country, you're paying to be part of the class that gets to run it. As two former public school boys go head to head for the top spot in number 10, promising tax cuts for corporations and the top 10% of earners without having to suffer the indignity of a general election, what have we learned about the ruling class? Well, for starters, Jeremy Hunt really doesn't like being called rich. When the multi-millionaire and son of an admiral was asked by Jeremy Vine whether or not he was the richest member of the cabinet, he got his top hat and tails in a little bit of a twist. You, I gather you're the richest person in the cabinet, so... Um, well, I, hang on, hang on, Is Jeremy. that true, Jeremy, by the way? Well, Jeremy, I think my salary when I was running my business is far lower than your salary, if I may say. Um, but but I don't, I'm not I in I the cabinet. Yeah, but I don't think we should be going into the politics of envy. Because no, yeah, I wasn't, yes, I wasn't yeah, taking yes, a... Well, hang on, hang no, on. Yeah, no, 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 but is. I just was pointing out you're a business person, you've made some money, that's all. Yeah, no, you I love weren't. the way you, you immediately think it's critical. So, there we have it. The politically correct term for rich is, in fact, successful. <laughs> Snowflakes nowadays, eh? Two years ago, he made £14 million from selling his stake in a company that he founded in the 1990s after a series of failed business ventures. So, according to Jeremy Hunt, that makes him a self-made entrepreneur. He pulled himself up by his bootstraps. If by bootstraps we mean being born into the upper classes and attending one of the most expensive schools in the country. Hunt's repost that Vine earns more as a broadcaster than he did as a businessman is a deft bit of sleight of hand. Jeremy Hunt made money by already having money. So he's been kept afloat all his life by wealth while most of us have to survive on wages. Burning cash in front of rough sleepers, smashing up restaurants, sticking bits of yourself in dead pigs, allegedly. The social rituals of elite dining clubs at Oxford like the Bullingdon and the Piers Gaveston range from the cruel to the criminal to the downright queasy. <laughs> In her study of fraternities in the United States, anthropologist Peggy Reeve Sande suggests that this kind of mindless violence actually serves a much deeper purpose. She argues that, the overwhelming conclusion must be that these rituals reproduce an abusive social order. So is it any wonder that former Bullingdon member Boris Johnson a philanderer, a reporter who was sacked for making up quotes, a man who gave up the address of a journalist to an old Etonian chum so he could have him beaten up, feels so strongly that he deserves to occupy the highest office in the land. I mean, it makes sense when you think about it. If you want a successful career in making poor people miserable, it's probably best to practice on your rich friends first. Eton, Charterhouse, Oxford, Parliament, these buildings even look the same. What I'm saying is that elite boarding schools are the most powerful form of social engineering which exists in our society today. And after a decade of austerity, of policy assaults on working class people, we should ask ourselves whether leaving our futures in the hands of these born to rule corgi fuckers is truly in our interests or solely in theirs. I mean, let's be real about it. If private schools didn't confer unfair advantages on those who attended them, nobody would actually pay for them. But they also do more than that. 
Elite boarding schools and the dining clubs of Oxford nurture a perverse sense of class solidarity through a culture of pervasive cruelty. They're the engines which drive the pointless barbarism of our economic system. So let's just get rid of them altogether. Turn Eton College into Lower Slough High School, integrate the private system within the state sector, and once and for all, get rid of these weird vestiges of feudal Britain. Was that good for you too? If you liked this video, please share it. Follow us on Instagram, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, and if you really liked the video, please go to support.navaramedia.com where you can give us a one-off donation or subscribe for the equivalent of one hours of your wage per month.